There is no order, and I mean none, without chaos. And that's why we talk. So, you know, I'm here and I'm in New York City. And when you want to talk about New York City, there's a few conversations that you need to have. And one of them would have to be the beautiful Asia. <laughs> What's up? What's goody? You look good. Thank you. So do you. You like me? Yeah. Ah! yeah. <laughs> you look like so. You look refreshed. You look like peace. I'm definitely refreshed and peace. It's definitely on that. Definitely 100. percent Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been watching you like pretty much all day today. Okay. I've been watching you all day today because I wanted to see. What conversations have you had in the past? It's literally 2023. I remember when I first met you. Mind you, how long ago was that? You, do you, <laughs> so look, okay, so we was on a team. We was on um, James' team in t- um, 2012, I believe. Yeah. We won the collections ball. The Halloween ball. I think that's where I first seen you at. No. I, and we had to have met before then. In New York? It had to be New York, definitely. It but I, I could have sworn I met you before that. I think so too. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really sure. Yeah. And then even at that bar, you was, I didn't see you. I don't think I seen you until you came out. Yeah, because remember, they was locking me in a closet. James kept me in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, because I'm like, where is she? is she? I'm like, is she here? What is it giving? I mean, we was in the car. That was a good time. We had ate them up. No shade. Yeah, no shade. Those are no, no shade. We had fucked them up. Um, that's on Alola. <laughs> but yes, you look. <laughs> that's on Alola. No shade. We had fucked them up. Check them clips out. <laughs> but um, who you battled that night? I battled Jasmine. They made us battle twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, clean, sweet. But what I'm saying is this. You look really peaceful. A lot of yeah. the interviews that I was watching with you, you talked about healing. You was yeah. like, I'm in, a, I'm in a state of healing because there's been a lot going on with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does healing look like to you? Um, healing is it just about your journey. It's about like becoming the best version of yourself, mm-hmm. of yourself, and not trying to like be someone else or be anyone else liking about what is only about you. So healing is depending on where you need to go in life. So that's what I took from it, from healing. And I'm still healing. Every day is mm. healing. Yeah. It's an ongoing journey. It's forever. I love that. Mm-hmm. It's it's really important to know. We're always learning about ourselves. We're always evolving. And healing is a is something that we have to be intentional about. Very intentional. Like, I start, I start my day with that. It's mm. all about, I start with, like, I read my books. I read, like, a chapter every day in the okay. morning. Um, I used to. I was stretching, but I took a little break, okay. whatever, from that. But I was stretching every every morning um and just giving thanks to god and kind of just focused on peace no matter what no matter what was going on no matter what happened the night before i like to start my day refresh it's a new day that's what it is i love that yeah we we have been talking for a while about this interview Mm -hmm. and about what was next and i wanted to be really clear about when i started back doing the show when i started back doing chaos talks i wanted to be very mindful about messages that i was sending out and so we talked we me and asia had bitch when i say we kicked it but like (laughs) like no we had went we have had conversations leading up to it's like okay so what you what you own though because it's you what you talking about because i need to know um asia you have been such a light in my life and i don't know if you know but the conversation that we've had we had a, a lunch date recently yeah and it was so powerful, the things that you said to me. It was mm-hmm. like, damn, you really should be a manager. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but it was, it was really inspiring and just like seeing go for what you need to go for. Be outside. Be intentional. And we talked about the books and stuff, too. So yeah. I brought you a book. Yes. I brought you a book. Let me see. Let it's me right behind book. you. No okay, shit. Okay. It's right behind you. So this okay. is The Power, Power of Now. Of I brought now. you a now. What is it about? This is a book about being conscious and being present. The Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment. Yes. yes. And this is the book I told you about at lunch. Okay. I want you to read this book because it, a lot of times we're so focused on, and not to, not you at all, mm-hmm. but it's just something I think we can always remember and read over. Yeah. A lot of times we're so worried about, because when I, when I get this money, when I talk to this person, when I do this thing, that's when I'm going to have happiness. That's when I'm yeah. going to be present. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. all about right now. Yeah. If you're not, like, that's a good thing that you said that. Happiness comes from yourself. It doesn't mm. come from anyone else or anything else. It comes from yourself. A lot of times, that's 
why we go into situations of so upset because in our mind we assume that this man is if he don't make me happy mm, talk I'm about it him, or i don't want to be with him or if i'm not happy here then i'm not going to be happy what but what it is is you have to be happy within yourself yes you have to be intentional about that as well you have to put yourself in the right space in the right mind everything and just work on that being happy so it's about your happiness no matter what's going on i love that and happiness starts with you as you just said like take that with you on your journey happiness starts with you it's not gonna be a man it's not gonna be a certain amount of money it's not gonna be this ball it's not gonna be this win that's another thing too if if someone gives you if you're expecting someone to give you happiness imagine if they don't give it to you you're fiending for that happiness and so you you assume or take anything from that individual because it's like you want it so badly from them Mm -hmm. it's like you want I want your happiness and I'm now I'm not getting it today I got it yesterday but I'm not getting it today so what am I doing wrong and you start you start shitting on yourself you start beating yourself down mm-hmm. because you think something is wrong with you Absolutely. or why he's not getting you happiness and that's it's the problem no matter what the happiness comes from you and you have to remember that I'll take that everywhere now especially where i'm at where i'm at and stuff where you at absolutely so to to go back to where you at and we talk about happiness with a man mm-hmm. are you single um I'm, uh, yeah i'm around <laughs> like i'm talking what's what's with that <laughs> ah, what it look like you said, is you entertaining a few people is you sex and bag what happened i'm entertaining conversations i just really wanted to like these past three years were <laughs> important to me um to focus on myself because before that i was never single you always had a man. We love a we love a man. No shade. But I love a man that was anybody that was just he was attractive, but uh-huh. he, on the inside he was not for me. Mm. And I had to realize my worth and understand myself and heal certain areas in my life where it's like I know what I deserve and I know what I want. It's like I can't be I can't fix no one else no. to be what I want them to be. So I have to meet someone where they're at and accept them. And it's like, even if he's not for me, move on. He Please. may not be for me. He's for someone else. He's for someone else. He's not mine. That's not, that's not my nigga. Um, bad, though. Of, he can be bad. He can be cute. He can do all of the bad. things. But if he's not, if he, if you're trying to make him someone in your mind, it's, ne- it's like it's, like it's not going to work. Because no. you want him to be a cat when he's a dog. <laughs> he got older, but he never grew. No. So oh, shit. oh, that was cute. That? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, because it'd be a lot of that. So I think so. Me and Asia, we share. We're both Leos. Yeah. So shout out to all my Leos. Y'all make sure y'all Leos. drop a lion down below. So it's a lot with us. They always think that um, there's so many characteristics that are not true about us. Yeah. About being um, <coughs> definitely liars. How we? I don't understand. We're how can we be so like driven by ego but then be liars i don't owe you shit bitch i'm not lying what it is oftentimes i think is we give them a layer of us yeah we can be mysterious creatures but it's like i'm gonna give you this layer but there's more to it so just take that i need to honestly figure out who you are so speaking to you what is that like when you're getting to know someone how much of yourself do you give people and not just in a relationship but just in general how much of yourself do you give to people? Now I'm peace myself. Okay. And not saying that I, I'm scared to show who I am to them, but before I used to hurry up and give everything to a person because I wanted them to see me. Regardless mm. if they gave me everything of them, I was just I was 100% in. Like, okay, I'm in here. Mm-hmm. But I had to, real, and I was always getting broken heart from that because I was like, whether it was friendships or relationships, these people weren't coming 100% at the door, just like me. So now... I like to pace myself, but I also give everyone trust now. Shout out okay. to Jabari. Okay, tell me about this trust. Like, you know, he kind of like gave me some insight on just kind of like trusting people from the beginning. Okay. And stop assuming that they're going to hurt you. So mm. stop assuming that it's something wrong or something's going to happen. Enjoy the process. Accept them for who they are. Yeah. And even if they're not a good person, you just have to move on. It's, don't take it personal. That's them. That's them. And it doesn't reflect who you are. Hell no. That's projecting. Okay. That's that's. Your, that's your life. That's on you, sister. No yeah, shade. That's your life. <laughs> um, that speaks a lot of the, a book that we were talking about, the Four Agreements, too. Mm. Like not making. I can't put what I think about you on you. I have to accept mm. that. So I love that you giving out trust. And then if someone does something that jeopardizes that, that's just how that is. Yeah. That's yeah. dope. So yeah. tell me, I want to go back though. Let me. Can we go back a little bit? Oh, of course. I want to go back just a bit, not too crazy, not too far. But you grew up in New York City. Grew up in New York City. I grew up in. Actually, I was born in Amityville, Long Island. You was born in Amityville, Long Island, with a horror. 
<laughs> where, 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 where down there? First of all, the Harbor, <laughs> they, the Emmy for Horror House is actually in, um, it's actually not in New York. It's, it's, it's in Copac. No, Massapequa. It's in Massapequa, okay. actually. It's not actually in Amityville. Okay, because I was I like, damn, so you come from... Okay, great. But I moved <laughs> to Brooklyn around like 12. And what was that like for you? Because I know that um, your family is very, they're accepting of you and things like that. They're accepting, but I definitely went through some trials and tribulations with them. Mm. I, uh, uh, like, that had nothing to do with my transition. That had mm. to do with just, you know, like, just people going through things in their lives. Like, you know, my mother been through some shit, so mm-hmm. she put that on me. She projected her life on me. And, you know, like, I had to deal with what she was going through because of what she was going through as a child. You know, you're there. So, yeah. A lot of times our parents, you know, I, I say this often. Our parents don't have a manual. They don't have a book on how to Not raise a child. All. So it took a lot of, I, I had a recent conversation with my dad to have to forgive him mm-hmm. because they don't know. They do the best they can they can with the information mm-hmm. that they have. That's a fact. You know, so I, that's, that's something I've been It took me a very on. long time to accept my mom for mm. who she is. I was trying to make her better for me. Okay. I was trying to, like, tell her, like, you know, go get therapy for me. Like, I didn't tell her that, but I was like, you know, get in therapy, get in things because I wanted her to be better. But I had to realize that I just got to be better for me. My life consists around Asia. Mm. I have to accept everyone for who they are. Their process is completely different. And God has a a book for them. And we all have our own book. And Mm -hmm. that last (laughs) page is for you to get there, not for me to get you there. And (laughs) I don't know what that even looks like. So I'm not, I can't try to make someone better for me. I got to focus on me. And that's it. That's really it. I love that. I love that focus. So you, growing up in, NYC, growing up in Brooklyn, and then somehow, some way, you got into the scene. How that happened? So I got into the scene around, um, around I was about sixteen. Ooh. Um, actually, I was younger. I was fifteen, actually. And I got into. I was in the scene a little bit before that, but as far as do you mean like walking? I mean. Yes, because okay. I think we all had the time where we were taking a gander at the tent. Like, what did that give him? But I want to know, when did you step foot into the thing? Like, bitch, I want a piece. I was 15. I walked real nice. I was with Katrina. Um, shout out to her. I was with her and um, my grandfather, Tigger. Okay. And we used to always go to the clubhouse on 122nd Street and 3rd Avenue. Literally <laughs> iconic. Iconic. Uh-huh. Like, you have no idea. Sure. What? I saw some of them. When I tell you, <laughs> I literally saw, like everything i needed to see <laughs> i saw a lot though i saw a lot in the village i saw a lot there and it was just mm-hmm. kind of like i'm a storyteller in my head okay i'm a narrative like i love a, narr- a good narrative so in my head i'm just like looking at everything like just absorbing in and that's i, I absorb so much because i like to be creative mm-hmm. I, I feel like that's where you find it's like any anything and anyone can be your muse yes <laughs> so i look for i look to be creative in other spaces like if i'm sitting somewhere and a hat can just drop it was like oh okay maybe i can drop my hair next time no shit like, that would just, just pop yeah like pick you know? it up spin it around do yeah. my thing it's just like inspiration it, it, everywhere it inspires you like you mm-hmm. know but um I was about 15. We went to, um, I went to the clubhouse and I stayed. And ever since then, I fell in love. Because, you know, the clubhouse was the club and then it went to the ball. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. So it was a club. Boom, information for you. And then it turned into the ball. Um, Well, the one on small 22nd Street, it did. I'm not for sure, but the one downtown, I'm not for sure. I think that was a straight ball. A little music straight ball, but the one on 122nd was straight up club. Okay. And then it went to Bogan, you know, ballroom. And once I stayed, I had stayed with because she was walking because Trina was walking, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to support That's my bitch. I'm going to support her. No shit. We need friends and like that. And like, I was like, oh, my gosh. I was obsessed. Like, I was just like, what the fuck? Like, it was just so many beautiful women, mm-hmm. so many different, like, just energies. And I was just like, bitch, these bitches are just bad. No shit. Not Inspires. just bad. It was just energy, like, that femme queen energy that you get, that you don't get all the time. And it was just like, Ooh, oh. Femme queen energy. I was just like, oh. And I felt their energy like just when I remember a girl like the girl the film queens are standing by the mirror mm-hmm. and they were just selling it. I was just like, bitch, what is that? Wait, was, was they just was like, they getting ready or what was they doing? Why was they, they in the mirror? They were just selling it. They, you know, they hyping themselves up. Like, it's like, really it. it's Her. really called hyping yourself up, but people don't know that. People think assume that uh, oh she's feeling it. She's not feeling it. She's hyping herself up. Like she's hyping herself up around all these people that's gonna stare at her, mm-hmm. that's gonna pick her apart, that's doing everything other than what just saying hi. They're literally doing everything so 
film queens, a lot of the time, when you hear to see them in their head and you think they're feeling it, they're really just hyping themselves up to be around so many judgmental people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just got excited. And ever since I walked, I was like, let me walk. And actually, my grandfather was like, walk. And I walked. And, I, you know, I did cute. Mm-hmm. I ain't went right. I did cute. Okay. My first time. They went out. So this Fem Queen energy, I want to talk about that because the girls, we we worship our girls, we put them on this pedestal, and then after the lights go off, it's like it's it's not that same energy. So the, I feel like the girls have to do more. But is this Fem Queen energy? Is this a little bit about like manifesting? Like, bitch, I'm about to turn this tonight. What is what is this Fem Queen? Energy? It's just hyping yourself. Up. It's kind of like throwing affirmations out there, like mm. what you would call affirmations, but you're putting inside your head. Like for me, I do what I do now is I kind of just speak everything how I feel and what I actually know and believe about myself. I speak it into myself right before I'm about to walk or right before I'm even about to walk into these rooms because these spaces can be really toxic for people just in general. So, you know, a lot of times they expect femme queens to really be like that energy, that 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 mm-hmm. that energy stepping into the ball or stepping in anywhere. So, yeah, I think it's about hype. It's about the hype. It's about, you know, good energy to yourself i love that we need more femme queen energy i want more femme queen energy for everybody <laughs> turn it into what you need to turn it into so you grew up in new york city and you see all of these different things and then so you get into the scene now i'm aware that you were a blonde and you got into there and you joined that house for because of your friends yeah correct I went, yeah well, i went to the house for my friends we was there for like a month or two no i'm sorry like three or four months yeah. Um, shout out to the House of Blondes, because they was Blondie. they were very hot. Shout out to House of Pony. I put the sign in back in Blondie. <laughs> bitch, get me some room. I remember. Oh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when you when you joined your next house, which was Balenciaga. Yeah. Why did you decide to join Balenciaga? I was actually with the Blondex, Um, and I wasn't, mind you, it was crazy. I was, um, it was a ball in Harlem. I don't know what ball it was. It was in Harlem. <laughs> it was at, like, this. I can't. I remember everything that happened at the ball, but I do not remember the name of the ball. That's crazy. It's cool. Give it to me. (laughs) Tell me the story. But uh, but so I was there with the Blondix. We were sitting right next to the Agas. And literally the energy, I was just like, that's me. Like, that's what I want to be. That's like, that's what I want to be. I was just in love with them. Like, I was just in love with how they pulled up together. I loved how elegant they looked, the females. I love how they was kind of like celebrity vibes. Like, they just gave this mm. energy of just like, we are that bitch, whether you think it or not. I know I'm that bitch. And I wanted to be around that energy. I was just like, bitch, yeah, if I'm going to do this, I want to be with them. I think that's dope. I think the Balenciagas do have that energy. They have Definitely. that. They they have that elite energy. I think the Balenciagas have that. I think that the House of the Van has that. I think that the Mugler's have that. I think the Alpha Omegas are creating that. Mm-hmm. Um, what other houses that have that celebrity vibe to them? That just that eliteness because it's. I feel like every house has a different thing though. They do. They do. Every house has something different. I want to speak to the, the what I speak to is the, the elite celebrityness. Yeah. That you can't sit with us. Type it's of good. Feel. But it is bad at the same time. It is because I think um the House of Allure had that real bad. Like the House of Allure was like very elite, very you can't sit with us. Yeah, uh, uh, like the bougie up echelon vibes. Like is it's like okay, yeah, I work at it. like some of these some of these labels, some of these houses are actually fit the labels. So mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. You know so. It's kind of like if I work, can you work? Can you actually work for a lawyer? Can you work for me? <laughs> like, it's like so that was cute way to put that. You ain't yeah. that. So, like, a lot of times, can people, you, you know, they don't like it. To me, I think it matches the houses, it matches the labels from the houses and labels. It matches to me, like, they match. So, you went to Balenciaga mm-hmm. and then you obviously left. Mm-hmm. But I think what I want to talk about is the way that you left. And let me tell you where I was at with it, right? Mm-hmm. I was doing my thing, minding my business like I do. And it was a jacket yeah. and it was a post yeah. and it was a statement and it was yeah. very intentional. <laughs> And I have never seen someone leave a house with such a bold statement and so fab. Yeah. You left the house of Balenciaga with a jacket that said Asia X Balenciaga. I need the full detail. Can we talk? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What was that about? So 